Hello, Canada. The Canadian team has made only one change in their lineup. Jean Rattel replaces Bill Goldsworthy for tonight's game. The Soviets have pulled a surprise and have made no less than six changes. We'll tell you about them later. Brian? Foster, I think one of the reasons the Soviets have made changes is they realize that they have to be stronger in the corners. I see they've dropped number 11, Zeman, and in the latter part of that game in Toronto, Zeman was pulling up considerably when he'd go into the corner to check. I also know that they have changed and dropped Ragulin on defense. I think after Ivan Cornoyer went around him like a hoop around a barrel, I think the Soviets thought that they couldn't put him back in there tonight. So we are going to see a lot of changes. We don't exactly know how they're going to combine them, but there will be a lot of changes for the Soviets. As far as we can check, Vasiliev and uh, Shatilov are going to be on the defense. Mishakov, Salutikin, Anison, Lebedev, and Bodnov have been added to the lineup, and I believe they are starting a kid line. Not starting, but we'll have a kid line out there. Those three players, of course, being Anison, Lebedev, and Bodanov, all of which are 21 years old. Tremendous crowd uh, in the uh, Winnipeg Arena. Heading tonight's pregame ceremonies is a presentation of commemorative gold medallions to the two head coaches. Tony Esposito heading out onto the ice, the last member of Team Canada to head out of the dressing room. A tremendous ovation here in Winnipeg for both the teams as they step onto the ice. The two head coaches, Harry Sinden and Bobarov at center ice waiting to be presented with their gold commemorative gold medals. for a special presentation. Taking part are Mr. Al Scott, coordinator for Hockey Canada, Father David Bauer, and coaches Sinden and Barbara. Mesdames et messieurs, veuillez diriger votre attention au centre de la glace pour une cérémonie de présentation à laquelle prendront part Monsieur Al Scott, coordinateur de Hockey Canada, le père David Bauer, et les entraîneurs Sinden du Canada et Bobrov de l'Union soviétique. On behalf of Hockey Canada and our president, Mr. Charles Hay, I am honored to ask Father David Bauer to present gold medallions to Coach Bobrov and Coach Sinden. Silver medallions are to be presented to each member of both teams. De la part de Hockey Canada, Je suis honoré de demander au père de David Bauer de présenter ses médaillons d'or aux instructeurs Barbara et Sinden. Chaque joueur des deux équipes recevra un médaillon d'argent. Merci. There's a good look at Father David Bauer who just presented the gold medallions to the two coaches. And there's Harry Sinden leaving the ice. Here are the lineups for tonight. And now down to the, the ice level and the one. introduction of the players. L'Union Soviétique. Number one, numéro un, Victor Zinger. Number two, numéro deux, Alexander Gousseff. Numéro 3, number 3, Vladimir Luchenko. Number 4, numéro 4, Victor Guskin. Number 6, numéro 6, Valery Vasiliev. Number 7, numéro 7, Ganandi Sikanka. Number 10, numéro 10, Alexander Maltsev. Number 12, numéro 12, 
Eugenie Mishakov. Number 13, numero 3, Boris Mikhailov. Number 14, numero 14, Yuri Shatalov. Number 15, numero 15, Alexander Yakushev. Number 16, numero 16, Vladimir Petrov. Number 17, numero 17, Valery Karmakov. Number 19, numero 19, Vladimir Shadrin. Number 20, numero 20, Vladislav Tretiak. Number 21, numero 21, Vyacheslav Solodukin. Number 22, numero 22, Vyacheslav Anisin. Number 24, numero 24, Alexander Bodunov. Numéro 23, number 23, Yuri Lebedev. And now, Team Canada, l'équipe Canada. Number one, numéro un, Ed Johnston. Number two, numéro deux, Gary Bergman. Number three, numéro trois, Pat Stapleton. Number five, numéro cinq, Brad Park. Number six, numéro six, Ron Ellis. Number seven, numéro sept, Phil Esposito. Number 12, numéro 12, Ivan Cournoyer. Number 14, numéro 14, Wayne Cashman. Number 17, numéro 17, Bill White. Number 18, numéro 18, Jean Rattel. Number 19, numéro 19, Paul Henderson. Number 20, numéro 20, Peter Mahovlich. Number 21, numéro 21, Stan Mikita. Number 22, numéro 22, J.P. Parisé. Number 23, numéro 23, Serge Savard. Number 25, numéro 25, Guy Lapointe. Number 27, numéro 27, Frank Mahavlik. Number 28, numéro 28, Bobby Clark. Number... Number 35, numéro 35, Tony Esposito. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask you now to stand and observe a moment's silence in memory of the Israeli athletes who died so tragically in Munich yesterday. Mesdames et messieurs, nous vous demandons de rester debout, de garder un moment de silence à la mémoire des athlètes israéliens qui ont trouvé une mort tragique à Munich hier.
please remain standing for the Soviet and Canadian anthems. S'il vous plaît, restez debout pour les hymnes nationaux de l'Union soviétique et du Canada. Now the traditional exchange of gifts. Team Canada giving a provincial crest from Manitoba to the Soviets. And there is Kuskin, the captain, exchanging crests with Stan Makita. This is game three of the Canada-Soviet series, series from Winnipeg. And now for the uh, starting lineups. Esposito is in goal for Canada. Clark and Bergman on the defense. And the Clark Ellis Henderson line is uh, starting for Canada. Tretriak, of course, is in goal for the Soviets. The 
Zinchenko and Sagankov on the defense. And Maltsev with Harlamov and Mikhailov, the uh, forward line for the Soviets on the starting gun. So now we're all set now. And there's the uh, Zinger, the extra goalkeeper. And Ed Johnson, of course, is the standby goalkeeper uh, for Canada. The Soviets are going into a huddle over there by the blue line. They do that every game. They get all in a group, uh, give a little cheer, I guess, like a college team, and then uh, skate over to their bench, which is on the far side of the arena. Now, uh, Tretriak has been quite a sensation, number 20, uh, in goal for the Soviet. And, of course, Tony Esposito, who gave such a great showing in the second game of the series. Now we're all set for the start of the game. Maltsev cleared the puck from the faceoff. Park going in back of the Canadian goal. Park is covered on the play by Harlamov, but the puck goes loose to Bergman. Bergman is covered by Mihailov, and the Soviet looks as like if they're going to put the pressure on right from the drop of the hat. There's a rolling puck in front of the goal. Here's the shot by Maltsev, right on. And Esposito made the save as the uh, Soviet are moving in on that ganging attack right off the start. Tony Esposito's called upon to make a big save here. Now look at Mihailov gets that puck out perfectly. Maltsev backs away after the defenseman drops. Esposito called upon to make a big save. Clark from the faceoff is trying to get out. Maltsev missed him. Bergman played it over on the wing. It slides out. And Luchenko goes back to get it. Shooting the head at center ice. Harlamov is in there. Stopped by the Canadians. Team Ellis tried to get away after Henderson had broke up the, broken up the rush. Clark shot against the Soviet defense. The puck goes loose back to the Soviet goal. Maltz over on the right side to Harlamov. He went in on the boards. Bergman is in ahead of him. And Bergman failed to clear it away when it hit Mihailov. Puck is over in the far side. Luchenko shot it back to the net. Mihailov recovers. And the Soviet are putting on the pressure. Luchenko let one go. It's knocked to the side. Another shot. Right on. Knocked out on the right wing. Canada break with one man back. A pass is intercepted as... Sagankov was right in position to intercept that pass. Now the puck goes loose into the Soviet zone. Yakushev is starting to move. Chadron is out there with him. Canadians get a shot, a weak shot to the side. Here's another drive by Bill White. The right side. This was a high rising shot by Bill White. A perfect shot. Now Kretschak can't control the rebound. He juggles it. Parise standing on the doorstep. Bangs the puck in the far corner. Here's another angle. Kretschak cannot control a high rising shot by White. John Paul Parise got that one from White at 154 and was right after a change of lines by the Canadian team. The time is 1.54, Parisi from White. All set for the face-off, and Anderson is now at center ice for the Soviets as they put their kid line out. The puck is recovered by Anderson, who took a long shot. Esposito played it off to the wing. Canada leading one to nothing in this third game of the series. A long pass to Mahovlich. He's covered by Anderson. The puck went over on the right wing. Cardwaye goes into the corner and pins Shatilov with quite a jolt on the right side. Vodnov moves down the left wing to center ice. A long shot. Steered off to the corner. Stapleton beats the pass to Mahovlich to Cardwaye, number 12. Back again at center ice. And they finally shoot it in on a player change for Canada. Raquel is going out there 
for the Canadian team. A long pass to Vodinov. Failed to click. Bill White carries it into the corner for Canada. Lobbing it on the side. Stopped by Vasilia. It's, there's going to be a penalty on the play for Elboing. And there's the first penalty of the game. Sixteen fifty-eight is the time. It was an elbow by Vasiliev. So Vasiliev of the Soviet team gets the first penalty for elbowing. So it looks as if they might be going to clamp down a bit. The time is 3:02 of the first period. Canada leading the Soviets one to nothing. A goal by Perisi from White at 1:54. Puck is back to park, cleared over on at the blue line, intercepted, here's a long shot, he scores! A long shot from the right side by Petrov, right from the faceoff. Can't make careless passes around the blue line. Frank Mohamlitz misses the pass here. Petrov walks right in, now look at the triangle, the way Tony Esposito goes down. 3.16 is the time of Petrov scoring play, and it came right after a change of players. Petrov got that draw and fired it. Now Canada trying to come up to the blue line. Lucheco trying to knock it off to the wing. Here's Park getting a shot. Ooh, a sizzler. Puck is shot down the ice. Park is... Going ahead of Petrov, 16. And Lapointe is now returning for Canada on the far wing. Pulled away from Mishakov. Centered in front. It's deflected to the blue line, but not out. Mahavlitz, 27. Getting his shot right on. Petriak stopped it. Back to Lapointe, who missed it. A break down the left side. Petrov keeps after it. Goes right on. Esposito took him off into the corner, and Canada come back. The, top, the score is tied, 1-1. Marwaye let a hot one go there. Tetriak went high with his glove to knock it down from the corner. Marwaye again trying his luck. Luchenko partially stopped at the first time, and then it went to Kuzka. Puck is back at center ice. Bill White taking a long shot and again frequent changes coming into the game. Luchenko back to the net with Ellis after him. Henderson rushes over to stop him. Now Kuzka, number four for the Soviet, right on to Stapleton stick. Up to Esposito who couldn't carry it. Yakushev comes right back driving it into the Canadian zone. The score is tied. 1-1. Greasy scoring for Canada. Petrov for the Soviet. Esposito to center ice. Lock one wide of the net. Gusev cleared in back of the goal. There goes the helmet of the Soviet player. Yakushev comes up at only Esposito stole the puck from him and Clark is coming over the boards with Ellis and Henderson. A sliding pass goes to center ice. Yakushev broke it up. Clark drives it over the line into the Soviet zone to one side of the net. Gusev is covered by Clark. Henderson is trying to dig it out. It goes back to the Soviet goal. A long pass goes right down the ice. And it'll be called for icing. With the score, Canada won and the Soviets won. This is game three from Winnipeg. Petriak was tested there by Paul Henderson with a low drive from the left side. Vodnov failed to get past center ice. Vasiliev on the defense now was stopped. And Bill White, 17 for Canada, alone. Tries to pull his way through. It's recovered by Vasiliev, who goes back to the net. Clark dumped him over on that far side. A dump again. Here's a close in play. The puck hit. That's Stapleton. The Soviets get it again. Anderson getting it over on the far wing to Lebedev. And he was checked. Canada on the attack to center ice. A hard check there by Kuskin slowed the Canadian player down. It was Cashman. Cashman is out there now. There's a shot high over the Canadian goal. It's a 1 1 tie. Canada trying to get Sevard 
Savard is up to center ice. Savard comes up over on the right side. Savard keeps on going into the corner. He's 23, but he was finally stopped by Shadlow. Into the corner for Anderson. And boy, was he bounced, and he left his helmet there. Play is called. This is a good, stiff body check. And Savard really takes Anderson out. Anderson, 21 years old. This is his first big test in international competition. That whole line of 22, 23, and 24 getting their first chance in international competition. From the face of Harlemoff is over on the right wing, still going. The puck got away from him. It's lobbed up to center ice. Luchenko drives it right back in again. Esposito stopping it back with a goal. Canada regrouping, starting to make the move. A long pass on the left side from Savard. A long drive. Petriak knocked it to the side. It goes into the corner. Maltsev attempted a forward. Gets a return at center ice. Beating down over the line. A drop pass is intercepted. Cashman there to head to Esposito. Esposito going into the corner. Was shoved around a bit by Sagankov. Now here's the shot on goal. Wide of the net. It's going to be a penalty call on that last play. And looks like a slashing penalty. With the score, Canada won and the Soviets won. This is game three from Winnipeg. one. Canada will be a man short. Initial. Cashman going into the penalty Equipe box for slashing. Numero 14. At 801. Cashman. Numero 2. Cashman. For avoir well, that's the first Canadian penalty. Vasiliev had received a penalty prior to that. Petrov scored the lone Soviet goal unassisted. Harlamov is now moving down with Maltsev, number 10, over the Canadian line, going into the corner. And he's taken into the board by Brad Park. They're really playing it hard. A loose puck comes back to Luchenko at the blue line. Over on the far wing, a fake shot goes into the corner. And the Soviet player fell, trying to dig it out. Mihailov comes from the side, was stopped. Now they move from the other side. They're jiggling that puck, puck around quite a bit. Mihailov played it to the corner. Saganko is handled by Bergman. There's a slash back to the goal there by Bergman. Play goes right on. It's back to Lachenko at the blue line. A pass to the left side. Back again. A slider was stopped by Bergman and cleared to the corner. Soviets still retained that puck. Mihailov cleared it. It's right in front of the net. Right in front. And they failed to get a drive on the goal. But the Soviets had the Canadian team mesmerized a bit with their passing plays. Where Canada is getting in trouble on this power play is that they're playing the box a little too tightly and they're giving the Soviets good puck control around the outside. This is Mihailov. He gets it through the far side. Now the box is a little too tight there. The defenseman should have been over in that far side and had it not been for a superb save by Esposito, the Soviets might have taken the lead. That was a close call for Canada there as the Soviet kept that puck just as if they had it on that string as they did in the first game. 50 seconds left in the Canadian penalty to Cashman. Canada recovers from the faceoff. Ellis, number six, gets to center ice. Is well covered by Yakushev on the play. Puck goes back into the Soviet zone. Yakushev took the pass from Pushkin. And it's still back in there. Gusev, number two, trying his luck as the Canadians are doing some real forechecking now. A quick pass up to the blue line. Shadron got it over to Yakushev and shot it back to the net. Saladukin getting it back to the blue line. The drive goes wide. Pat Stapleton deflecting it to the corner. Shadron stands there back to the blue line, back to Shadron. He still has it into the side there. Another pass goes astray, and that seemed to be a rather weak effort, but Gusev stopped it at center ice. Another try now, Botnov drives it against the boards. Canada at full strength. Teams at full strength. Each team has served a penalty. Ellis cut back. And the Canadian team in the game so far in this first period seem a little more cautious. 
A long sliding pass goes in and wide of the Soviet goal. It's called for icing as Cornwallier was rushing in there fast. Maltsev is uh, apparently getting a little attention and uh, they're taping up his hand. Whether he was injured or not, it's hard to say, but they're playing it rough out there and there have been some fair board checks in the game so far. The point and Savard are coming out for Canada on the defense. Anderson is going to be over at center ice. Lebedev is on one wing. This is their kid line. And Bodnoff is on the other wing. This is the first time the, these two, Lebedev and Bodnoff, have played in the Canadian series. Peter Mahovlich is out there now. The puck is cleared out at center. It rolls around at center ice. And it's finally Savard that cleared it over to Peter Mahovlich. Over on that left wing, here's a shot, and it hit the outside of the net. That was a close call as Rattel drove one from the side. He's the uh, added player for Canada in this game. A slider went wide of the Canadian goal. It wasn't a dangerous rush. Bodnoff was well covered, and Canada starts back a two-man break at center. Over on the right side, Karnwaye tested Petriak there from Tosin on the wing, and the Soviet goalkeeper just closed his pads. That line of Bodnov, Anison, and Lebedev, they're all 21 years old. Cornwallie breaks in from that right wing with that tremendous speed. Now watch him cut back towards the net. Tretziak right out, cuts down the angle, nothing to shoot at. Ready for the face-off. Esposito gets a shot. He's right in front of the net. And Parisi goes into the corner. Lachenko stopped him. It's up to Mihailov. Maltsev going down the right boards. He's number 10. It's recovered by Canada. Esposito getting it out to center ice. Cash but couldn't, couldn't get a stick on it. Sagankov fell, and the puck goes to one side of the Soviet goal. 1-1 one, one tie in this first period with 8.21 left. Canada recover. Cashman fighting for that puck. Goes over on the wing to try to pass. Reese couldn't get a real shot. A three-man break for the Soviet. Coming down with a pass from a high lock. The shot went wide. But they're walking right in there. Canada moving up on a three-man rush. Cashman gets it over the line. Rolled it to the side. A pass back to Esposito. His shot went off the leg. Cashman squeezes Lutchenko close to the boards there. With the score, Canada won and the Soviets won. This is game three from Winnipeg. Jackie Getting McLeod, all set now for the face-off. Shakashev. Shakashev has got the draw over onto that far side. Solidukin, Anderson. And a roller goes into the Canadian zone. A drive went off Park. He stopped it on his skate. Park cleared it out to Henderson. He wears the red helmet on that left wing. Puck bounces around to Ellis on this side. He's well covered by Sagankov. Shadrin failed to get away on his try. Yusuf played it over onto the wing. Yakushev, a rangy player, plays it over onto the far wing. Kuzkin played it ahead, and they drive it into the Canadian zone. Puck going to the opposite corner. Saladukin tried to center it out. Park blocked it. Stayed right in the slot there, and Park, number five, is trying to pull away from Shadron. Shadron had him covered, then Bergman plays it over onto the right boards, and Ellis taps it down the ice. Kuskin is going back, going over the line. He made no attempt, of course, he didn't have to, to stop it, and it's called for icing. Kuskin, number four for the Soviet, a very aggressive defense player. Both teams are playing it a lot more cautiously in this first period than they did in either Toronto or Montreal with a score one all. 
Both teams are trying to establish some sort of control before they take too many chances. Bill White and uh, Pat Stapleton going on the defense to replace Park and Foot with Bergman. Kid line for the Soviet out there again. Anderson at center ice. Vasiliev takes over on the defense. Stan McKee that tried to break out. Pat Stapleton lays it over on the wing to Mahovlich. Bernoye goes in to help him out. Bernoye tried to dig it back to Mahovlich who has it. Playing back of that net, centered out in front. Uh, Jordan Y.A. couldn't get a whack at it. Nikita is the center. Now a three-man break for the Soviet. Over the line, right in on goal. And a close one there as Bodnov had a shot. Canadian team roll that puck out, getting it out of their own territory. With Shadloff, number 14, playing his first game. Playing it ahead now to Amazon at center. The shot will stop. Gets it again, shooting it back to the net as the Soviet keep the pressure on the Canadian team. Bodnov was stopped. That's table that goes back to the goal. He's checked by Lebedev. Here's right in front of the goal. They're getting another shot. Oh, that just drains the post on that drive. They keep getting extra shots on there as the Canadian team are not clearing too well. Bodnov. Got that front back into the Canadian zone. Bill White over to Stapleton. Ahead at center to Escobedo. Over on the right side. Barnoye cleared in front. And it slides to the Soviet team of Mihailov. Coming back to Harlamov. Harlamov, 17. Let a hard one go. He nearly cleared it right into his own net off uh, his own teammate. But he was able to cover. And the puck goes to the left wing. Long clearing pass. Here's Cash. Right in on goal. And front reaction down low and covered. Harlemov coming back for the Soviet, weaving over on that right side, trying to center into Mihailov. Failed a click, a goal in front of the net. The Canadian team are having a number of close calls as the Soviets were right in close. And the defense don't seem to be able to knock them over. Up to center ice, Harlemov getting it over to Maltsev. Maltsev is dumped on the play. Greasy seem to upset him with his skate. They're going to call a tripping, likely. Yes, they're going to call a tripping penalty. But the score, Canada won and the Soviets won. This is game three from Winnipeg. For avoir fait trébucher à 15 minutes 47. This is it. This is an Academy Award winner, that penalty, Foster. <laughs> well, that's, uh, Parisi got the tripping penalty. The time is 15.47. And it looked uh, at the time as if the uh, Soviet player had just taken a sort of dive. But at the same time, he wasn't handled gently. Maltsev is now for the face-off. The Soviet having the advantage again in manpower for the second time in the game. Buck goes back to the Soviet blue line. They're regrouping the Chenko to Maharlov. Maharlov coming back at center. He's one of their stars. Back to Mihailov to drive right on. And a good stop there by Esposito. Canadian team trying to break out on the right play. Savard goes up over the line. Here's Peter Mahovlich going in a goal and his drive was wide. Peter Mahovlich took that pass right in for the shot, but failed to drive it home. Soviet coming right back by Hylov, 13. Savard stopped him. Savard with the point, shooting it away. And it's Zagankov for the Soviet to Lechenko, number three. He over skated the puck and nearly left it there as Bill Esposito was trying hard to get it. Up is still loose in the Soviet zone. Canada still a man short. 53 seconds of the penalty. A pass to the boards. Peter Mahovlich digs it out to center ice. And the puck rolls back to the Soviet blue line. Cleared back into the Canadian zone. Brad Park is going with a clearing shot down the ice. Tretriak having to stop it. Gusev, number two for the Soviet. Shot at the center ice. Bergman shot it right back, nearly hit the referee. Len Gagnon and Gordon Lee are the two officials. And they're 
much stricter in this game so far. Here's a trip or a bump there by Bergman, who really threw the hip, but allowed a uh, it was a good clean check there. It looked as if he might have got a skate in it, but he apparently got more hit. Now Yakushev was given the bounce as he tried to come down. And he was hit by Clark. Clark, 28, drives the puck down the ice. It's a bouncer wide of the Soviet goal. Another heavy check there by Ellis, and they're really hammering each other. Brad Park, five, over on the left side. Henderson tried to come in as they change players on the goal. It rolls right across the goal mouth. Dusev, number two, playing it over on the right wing. Shadron was replaced, and now Lebedev uh, is dumped by Henderson. Here's Canada coming in out of break. Right in that goal, right in. begin on the pass and it was home free. Team Canada takes control deep in their end. Now a good play by Ivan Conway. Now look at Rattel control the puck. Sees the opening in the top side and beats Tretjak with a good clean shot. Jean Rattel. Rattel really broke in there and you can see why he was added to the lineup for tonight's game, the third game of the series. He played in the first one, but uh, he had the know-how and he burst right through there and gave the Soviet goalkeeper, Tretiak, no chance. And now Canada takes the lead, two to one. Canada two, Soviet one, Rattel at 1825. Down that far wing for Anderson. He failed to get anywhere with the help of Lebedev. Starting out again, up to center ice. Bill White cleared a forward pass too far. Goes into the corner. They center it out. Here's a shot by Mahavlin. Petriak stopped that. They're all around the goal. Here's another chance. Stapleton played it over onto the wing. It's right in front to Rattel on a pass from Barnoye. But he Goal's failed to get a shot as he was bumped Canada. just as he was set to go. Lebedev on the right wing, 23, slashes at Rattel. Assist, number 12, Then Anderson goes into the corner. Anderson playing a very strong Paul game for the Henderson Soviet. A pass and a check from behind by Mahovlich. As Canada Equipe take Canada. over at center, a long straight pass to Bernoye. Jean Went astray. Shadilov ahead to Mihailov to center ice for Harlamov, but he had his stick knocked Paul out of his Henderson. hands by Cashman. And Cashman laid it on fairly heavily. Tadlov took a long drive at Esposito. 12 seconds left in the period. 2-1 to one for Canada. And the Canadian team starting to move again down the right side at center ice. Skated off by Maltsev. Esposito had had his drive. Harlamov coming down with a drive. Was blocked as he tried to shoot at Bill White. Broke it up. And the excitement and the noise was so great that they couldn't tell when the period had ended. With the score, Canada 2 and the Soviets 1. This is Game 3 from Winnipeg. Recapping the first period at 154, Parisi scored for Canada from White and also Phil Esposito. At 3.16, Petrov scored an unassisted goal for the Soviet to tie it up. Then, at 18.25, Rattel moved in to score from Bergman and Cornwalle. And the period ended with the score, Canada 2, the Soviet 1. There were three penalties, Vasiliev for elbowing for the Soviet, Cashman for slashing for Canada, and Parisi for tripping. The times 302, 801, and 1547. So that Canada had two penalties and the Soviet won. As the teams get ready to go to the opening face-off, I have to remark, Foster, on the heavy hitting in that period. It was really fantastic to see both teams go into the corners. They were always looking for the checks and some checks like uh, Bergman 
Uh, Bill White going into that corner, throwing the shoulder, and I think the game's going to be won in the corners tonight. All set for the faceoff, and Shadron is at center ice, 19 for the Soviet, clearing it into the Canadian zone. Canada to the right, the Soviets in the white to the left. Oh, sliding, we have the shot. What to save that was on Gusev. Another drive, hit a player, and Bergman is going in back of the net, and the Soviets seem to take advantage of making a quick thrust right at the beginning of the period. Here's a breakaway for Phil Esposito coming in on the right side. He got in the rebound, oh, and he just failed to get it by Fretriac, who had stopped it and hooked that loop. Something cleared out at center, and it's finally staying there, and Puck is over the line. Reese was pushed around quite a bit on the play. Park intercepted that pass. Cashman is waiting for the pass. Goes to Esposito instead. Yakushev is down with Esposito. The two of them fell together. Cashman clears to Esposito to back of the net. He's trying to dig it out. Shoot it on the boards. Down the ice. And sliding. It's going over the line. Ball for icing. Greasy, 22, cleared the puck, and the shot was made by Esposito, 7. Puck is still in the corner. Canada in possession momentarily. Cashman recovered momentarily again by Lebedev. And they just, here's another shot from the blue line by Pat Stapleton as they got it back to the Soviet player. Now there's a rough and tough tussle in there, and it nearly started something. Again, those heavy checks along the boards, and I have to believe the reason the Soviets changed that front line, uh, bringing in the young kids and changing some of their defense foster is to get a little more beef in the corners because they know that Team Canada is going to play it very tough along the boards with Cashman, Parise, uh, Henderson, Ellis, and if they're going to win this game, they know they're going to have to meet Canada pound for pound along the boards, and so far, it's been almost a saw. Canada leading 2-1, to one, and the puck is in the Soviet zone. They break out three abreast, coming over in a long pass on the right side. It's a return pass there by Lebedev went astray. Another pass comes to the blue line. It's out. And the player is not covered by Stan Lakita, but he failed to get loose. Lebedev is knocked over, and there's rough treatment every time anybody gets near that puck. He goes up to center ice with Shavlov. Driving it over the line. Past Stapleton. He took a, a ride there from Lebedev, 23. The Soviet trying to climb in on the right side. Anderson cleared it back to the blue line. Here's the shot that's deflected. Another shot hit a skate when Lebedev had a try. Jamming session on the boards in the Canadian zone and the faceoff in the Canada zone. The checking along the boards is very fierce, and the one thing that a lot of people have commented on is that it appears that Team Canada appears to be running quite a bit. But I'd have to say that having played against the Soviets, you might notice their checking quite as much, but they have the stick, the elbow, the hand comes up in the face, and they come off the, the checks with the stick, and I'm sure that even though you don't notice it quite as much, that they're making that going just as rough. From the face-off, Canada gets it to the point. Now on the defense with Savard. Up to center ice. A cleared pass on the left wing to Henderson out there with Ellis and Clark. Buck rolls over onto the boards. They're watching this three-man break at center. Mihailov, 13, going in on the right side. Stops. He'll pass it if he ever gets a chance. And the puck rolls out over the line. Harlamov getting it back to his defenseman. Cleared over the line. They're moving in fast. Here's Maltsev getting the shot. And Esposito had to be very good to get that one right on his stick with glove. Esposito made a spectacular save here. A terrific shift coming down by number 10, Maltsev. And he passes that puck off quickly right here. Now Maltsev takes that pass. And Esposito almost gets caught trying to set up to cover the angle of Maltsev. Maltsev let that shot go the second he got it and almost caught Tony Esposito coming across the net. 
Puck slides to the blue line. The shot is wide of the net. Mihailov, 13, digs it out. It goes to Lachenko. He shoots it into the corner. Mihailov is watched by LaPointe. Puck goes back to the net, and it's grabbed off by Clark, given to Savard. LaPointe getting it ahead over the blue line. A long pass by Clark. Goes into the corner. Ellis didn't know he had it. Soviet trying to come back. A long clearing pass goes to Henderson. Another chance for Savard. He fooled. Mihailov goes to center. He's 23. Savard shoots it into the corner. He's playing a strong game. Henderson raced after it. Here's a shot by Ellis. And Petriak stopped that one. And Esposito is down on the ice after that collision with Lachenko. With the score, Canada 2 and the Soviet 1. This is game three from Winnipeg. Tretjak has been very strong in the Soviet net again tonight. From the faceoff, here's a shot from the blue line. Went wide there as it hit a leg. And nearly fooled Tretjak. Mark with the defense on the trench with Bergman. The puck goes in back of the goal. Cashman took his man out of the play. Vasiliev. And they're jabbing in the opposite corner. Gusev is watched by Parise. Got a pass from the corner and fired it home to give Canada a three to one lead. Esposito, a perfect example of your wingers working in the corners. Look at him fight for the puck right here. He gets it. Cashman out to his favorite. Esposito drills it to the top right hand corner. Tretjak had no chance. As you'll see on this goal, Tretjak has to cover the post and he gets beaten cleanly. From the face-off, the puck goes to center ice. And it's 3-1 now for Canada. Esposito got the goal. Cashman and Parise seem to get the assist, but we'll wait for the official on it. They're jamming in the Soviet zone. Parise trying to clear it out in front. 22. He gets it over the corner to Cashman. Goal There's going to be a penalty on the play. Here it Canada. goes. And it goes Number to the... Soviet player for interference, and Esposito is talking to him. You wonder how far they can go in this game without a fight developing. A fight in international hockey not only gets your team a 10-minute penalty, but it also gets the two players involved kicked out of the game, so they'll restrain themselves as best they can. But the tension is very immense here, and you have to believe that a fight might develop. Well, when you get... Uh, uh, rather tight refereeing and uh, it seems to irritate players and make them uh, retaliate at times when they would show better judgment but it's a hard hitting game there's no question about it the checking is extremely hard you couldn't say the officiating was lenient by any means but they're uh, they're calling just about everything they can. So far, I have to be impressed, Foster, with the man-to-man -man play that Team Canada has exhibited. They are playing the body tonight just absolutely Penalty. perfectly. USSR, number 60, Vladimir Petrov. Two minutes they, for uh, interference at 4.46. Punition, Union Soviétique, le numéro 16. Already with Rattel now at center ice for Canada. 4.19 was the time of Esposito's goal. And he was the real opportunist when he just touched that puck and it was in the net, the way he blazed it from the slot. Mahovlich with Rattel at center this time and Cornwallier. At the blue line, Brad Park to Cornwallier in the corner. He shoots it right in front of the goal. It bounces over to LaPointe. LaPointe drives it in back to the net. Cornwallier trying to get it back to Park. Fakes a shot. Backhands it. And it's driven down the ice. Tony Esposito skates out of the out to the corner. Shoots it around on the boards. Frank Mahovlich, 27, goes in front of his own net. Shadrach is trying to stop him. Mishakov Vista, the sliding pass goes into the corner. Rattel tried to dig it out, but couldn't. Mishakov, number 12, cleared ahead, and Shadron shot it down the ice. Canada turning again with a pass on the left wing. Peter Mahovlich 
Let it slide out. Vasiliev cleared on that left wing, and the Soviet player Shadron was turned around. Now Vasiliev getting a shot, and it's wide of the net. Alexander's view was blocked on that one. Back comes Canada. Lapointe carrying it at center ice over the line. Closing in right in front. Arcaille nearly got his stick on that one. That was a close call for the Soviets. As the puck comes out to center ice, part five. Changing players again. Part at the blue line. Failed to get by Mishikov. He's trying it again. Playing it KJ. Three to one for Canada. A cleared pass on the right side to Esposito. And he's out there quite often. The point to Peter Mahovlich at Corn and Cornwalle, who has it. Back to Peter Mahovlich, who tried to steer it, and it went wide of the net. And the Canadian team mixing up their lines now. Here's the point getting a shot. It bounced off the Soviet player, a two man break at center. The point trying to stick with Mishikov. Park is given the bounce against the boards, and then he's bounced. From behind there. Again, hard to step. Slider goes down. Cardwaye going after it. Closing in with Esposito, who is turned around without getting a shot on goal. Return rise by the Soviets. Petrov had his shot that bounced wide. And a swing at that puck went wide as it goes loose on that corner. Another shot is a drive off the target. Goes all the way back to Kuzkin, number four for the Soviet at his own blue line. Vasiliev was there with the two. Namahailov, number 13, is on the move. Passing, it's deflected. Mahailov will stop with his pass. Here and Henderson going up. Clark waiting after the shot was grabbed off by Trichak. Ellis having the drive. With the score, Canada three and the Soviets one. This is game three from Winnipeg. 12.09 left in the second period. Three to one for Canada. Clark getting that puck coming in right for the goal. And he shot wide of the net. Ellis recovers by breaking up the drive. Here's Clark in front of Henderson. And Ellis, right off. Another close call for the Soviet. Bill White and Pat Stapleton on the Canadian defense. Ellis rushing in, grabs the Soviet player, and bounces back to White. Here's a shot. Kretriak stopped it, went wide. It's out in front. Mihailov failed to clear. And the Soviet under pressure. A bump there by Henderson. Slowed the uh, Russian defense players. Sagankov down. And Mahar Maharlov turning, getting in on a shot. He finally passed in front. Oh, what a save that was by Esposito. The pass came right over to the side. And the drive on the short side was knocked down. That was one for the book. That had to be the best save of the night by Tony Esposito. Puck is recovered at the blue line by Canada momentarily. That is knocked over the line. There's going to be a penalty call here according to the official. Maltsev passed on the right wing. Goalkeepers don't make any attempt to move out. He held his hand up possibly just for a possible offside. The Soviet coming back on the right side. Harlamov going in with his shot and hit a leg. Cashman, 14, clearing it back on that. It's up with Esposito waiting for a long pass. Cashman goes into the corner. Sagankov in after him, stole the puck from him. Lost it again to Cash, centered out. Esposito drive was wide when he had a real shot there and hurried it. Canadian team keep that puck in there. Kavilov is trying to come out with a long forward pass to Anderson. Stopped on the play by Savard. Puck to the center. Cashman up to the head of Esposito. Two of them go over the line. The shot goes to the corner. Cashman takes a jolt. Hangs on momentarily, then lost it. And it's a three-man rush for the Soviet. Up over the line for Anderson. The puck goes into the corner to Vodnoff. 
shot over onto the wing, and a hobbling shot it out to center on a player change. Makita is out there now with Frank Mahoplin as the puck goes bouncing back to the goal. Makita with the red helmet dumped on the play by Lebedev to be a penalty there. Here comes the point closing in, centered in front. Goal is there. Another drive by Mahoplin and Makita tried to steer it home. Another try at the blue line. Here's the shot. Oh, the it go. And it's finally called when the Soviet get it. And does Lebedev ever hit Stan Makita right here? Makita tries to avoid the check, but look at him get the stick between the legs. And goodbye, Stan. Lebedev is off for tripping. Penalty, USSR, number 23, Yuri Lebedev, two minutes for tripping at 11 minutes. Punition URSS, le numéro 23. Lebedev Yuri is off for Lebedev. tripping at the... Two minutes for avoir fait trébucher à 11 minutes. Lebedev off for tripping at the 11 minute mark. And now Canada will have the odd man advantage. Canada leading three to one. Puck is cleared into the Canadian zone to the right. Rattel is out there with Peter Mahovlich. The two of them coming up at center with Parnoye dropping back. Puck was recovered momentarily by Mishikov and shot down the ice. Canadian team trying to get uh, regroup the point. 25, going back to the Canadian goal. Point leading the rush, coming up to the blue line. At center ice, hit his own man. It bounces back into the center ice area. Peter Mahovlich couldn't get it, but Rattel rushes after it. Cornwaye gets it back into the corner. Peter Mahovlich shoots it back to the net to Cornwaye. It bounces off the Soviet player, a race for it. And it's recovered on that far wing by Brad Park. A clearing pass over to Frank Mahovlich ahead to Rattel. Rattel cleared it back to Cornway. A shot. Oh, what a drive that was. And Krichak was able to get that one in great style. With the score, Canada three and the Soviets one. This is game three from Winnipeg. 7.50 left in the second period. 50 seconds left in the penalty to the Soviet. Mahovlich dropping in on that left wing. Center out to Esposito, and he tried to putt that one and just failed to get it. Another try now. The puck goes off a leg after Mahovlich had had a try. Stapleton at the blue line to Mahovlich. Mahovlich took a shot as Cornwaye tried to rush in for the rebound, which didn't occur. Brad Park is forced into the corner. Pacheco covers him. Parnwaye comes out in front. Rolled one near the goal. Kutryak is trying to see it. Mahovlich is chased into the corner by Sagankov. They center it out. And Harlamov goes racing away on a breakaway. Coming in on goal. He shoots, he scores! Harlamov came up from nowhere there to draw the goalkeeper out. Here's what happens when you don't keep an eye on the man. Slips in behind. Now Harlamov plays the carom off the boards perfectly. Now watch the good move. He protects the puck as he comes across in front. Esposito has made his move. And Harlamov goes right across the goal mouth and throws it up. Now look at this burst of speed. Now look at him protect the puck with his leg right across in front. Esposito's well out of the net. No chance. Harlamov, Harlamov made a beautiful effort there. He went right in to draw the Canadian goalkeeper out of position, and now it's 3-2 for Canada. Zagankov was covered on the boards right after Clark started uh, shoving a little bit. He's got Ellison Henderson out there, Bill White and uh, Pat Staple on the Goal defense playing out. By this game progresses, the ice could become a definite 17. factor out here. Carl McCaw, assists. Number seven, Ganandi Sigankov. The 
Over on the wing, Clark Carlos passes up too far for Ellis. 7, Petrov Yankov. coming back for the Soviet, had his pass intercepted. Pat Stable couldn't get anywhere. Yakushev is leaving around. The teams are full strength. As the puck comes back at center, Ellis. The Canadians are getting a little more cautious on the offside there. The play was called with 622 remaining. As I was saying there, Foster, the ice conditions could become a factor as this game progresses. The ice surface is very damp now. It's quite warm in this building, and the ice hasn't been in the Winnipeg Arena for too long. From the faceoff, the puck slides into the Canadian zone. 6-18 remaining in the second period. Here's a loose puck for Henderson. Right in. Score! Henderson went racing in there to get a loose puck, and he fired it home for Canada to bring back that two-goal lead. The Soviet defenseman isn't quite ready here. He doesn't realize initially that the puck got in behind him. And Paul Henderson makes a terrific move. Threaded the needle perfectly. Kretschak comes out, covers the angle perfectly, and Paul Henderson threaded the needle with a super shot in the far corner. 13-47. Paul Henderson got that two-goal lead back for Canada. And now it's 4-2 for Canada. Henderson getting it. And Harlamov had previously at 12.56 scored for the Soviet with Mihailov getting the assist. Both great goals. Now it's 4-2, to two and Parisi got to center ice, only to be checked by Lebedev. And the uh, Canadian team still holding the whip hand here, but it's still close. Anything could happen yet. A cleared pass to Anderson. Goes astray. Anderson, 22, trying it again. Soviet have six new players. Team in their Canada. Goal scored by number 19, Paul Henderson. This is number six, Ron Ellis, and number 28, Bobby Clark. And 13.47. Henderson Team from Ellis and Clark. Canada. Le numéro 19, Paul Henderson. Avec l'aide du numéro 6, Ron Ellis, et du numéro 28, Bobby Clark, à 13 minutes 47 secondes. From the puck is cleared to center ice, Esposito going down, made the pass to the point, tried to follow through for a loose puck, which didn't occur. Lebedev gets that puck out over the line, a squeeze play here, and... Shatilov tried to pull his way through, but was squeezed out and didn't get a direct shot at the goal. Esposito covering his man. They're bumping there on the side. Lebedev, 23. Here's a shot, and he scores! A carom shot. Went from the blue line there. It was Vasiliev that uh, fired from the blue line, and I believe it went off the Canadian player. This is a deflected goal. Tony Esposito really didn't have any chance in this. Vasiliev lets a good shot go. Tony Esposito makes his move in anticipation of where the puck was going. It deflects into the far corner. Valery Vasiliev, number six. Vasiliev at 14.59. Bringing the Soviet within one goal of the... Canadian team. Now it's Rattel starting back with Frank Mahovlich, getting right in on goal, right in! Oh, and Kretschak was able to cover the angle as the big game went roaring in. Mahovlich again going in back to the goal. They're trying to dig that puck out, but couldn't. And the Soviet come right back. Maltsev to center ice, going over the line, gets turned around. They still have the puck just for a moment, though. Trying to get that pass over to Cornwaille, failed. And it was offside. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets three. This is game three from Winnipeg. And du numéro six, Vasiliev, 
All ready for the uh, face-off at the Soviet zone. On that last scoring play, the, uh, the shot was fired by Vasiliev from the blue line, but it hit apparently Lebedev and caromed into the net. Now then, the puck goes into the Soviet zone. Bergman took his shot wide of the net. So that scoring play at 14:59. Lebedev from Vasiliev for the Soviet, making it four to three. The puck hit Lebedev instead of a Canadian player. They're all piled up in front of the net. Esposito had no chance. Mihailov getting it to Maltsev. Here's another chance, a shot, and that was a good save on the play as the Soviet are starting to move ahead a bit. Puck goes down the ice with Cheko, going back for it, picks it up, and Bill White and Pat Stable that are now on the Canadian defense. 827 left in the period. Puck goes into the Canadian bench. Four to three for Canada. And the Soviet keep pegging away there, getting those chances and taking advantage of them. An interesting little slogan up on the end of the rink. All set for the face-off. Back to Stapleton, number three for Canada. Over on the right side, Bill White. Shoots one into the corner. Kuzkin, number four, played it ahead to Mishakov. Up to the blue line, to center to Yakushev, over on the wing. Recovered by White, lost again. Then they pass back, and it's lost. And the Canadian team break back, Esposito. Clearing over on the left wing, into the corner. Greasy, very strong, knocked Kuzkin over. Puck is still in there. Greasy, 22 for Canada, right front of Esposito. Here's a shot, oh, and it went off the stick. As Kuzman had it pretty well covered on the play. Petrov was standing beside him. Canada keeps that puck in there, into the corner, Esposito. With Greasy, and the puck is recovered by the Soviet. With Petrov making a pass to the left wing over the Canadian line. And trying to set her out into leg, Petrov had another try, took the shot instead. Carried in back of the goal. Bill White cleared it over the line. Yakushev has Greasy well shackled on the play. Esposito takes a flip shot. It's deflected. And Kutriak was able to cover very neatly. The strength of Phil Esposito. When he gets a hold of that puck, they're running at him. They've got the sticks up. They're giving him the elbows, but Phil still manages to keep that puck up in front of him and always ready to make the play on goal. The face off will be to the right of Trutriac. Rattel is now at center ice for Canada. Number 18, Mahavlich on the wing. Cornoyer on the other. There's a shot right on there when the point let it go for the blue line. That was close. Comes out again. Soviet recover. They break fast. Three of them up to center ice. Going over the line. Vodnov is forced into the corner. He gets it back to Lebedev. The shot went wide. And this so-called kid line is certainly moving around. This line played last year at the World Student Games in Lake Placid. And they were the top line for the Soviets at that tournament and have earned the right to make this national team of theirs. Uh, Shatilov is on there with uh, Vasiliev, and that's a new combination for tonight's game. Soviets have six new players in there. Puck goes into the corner. It's passed in front. It rolls loose. Here's another pass right in front. He's got the score! And they tied it up. Botnov let it go almost before he could move. And Botnov has tied the score for the Soviet. Vodnov positions himself perfectly here, and Lebedev gets in the puck. Now watch him stand in position. Number 24, a quick shot, and he beats Phil es or Tony Esposito up into the top corner. Esposito's glove moved on it, but not quickly enough. So now it's all tied up by a very sterling effort by the Soviet in real classy way, the way they have that puck zigging around there. And now they start in again with Clark. Over on that wing to Ellis with Henderson. Ellis into the corner, shoots it back to the net. A 4-4 tie to indicate how close this game is. 
Buck is in the corner. The Soviet cleared right onto Bergman. Stickers, Henderson. Oh, what a shot that was. And a great save by Tretriak, who was down low to cover on Henderson's drive. A high loft is checked. Clark tried to center it out. One minute of play remaining in the second period. Gantoff goes back to the goal. Gantoff won the Soviet. Clears right onto Ellis' stick. Ellis goal gets it into the corner. USSR. 50 seconds left Number in the second 24. period. Ellis has it momentarily. Clark shoots it into the Assist corner. The Chenko drives it Tennessee. to the side. Clark is USSR. trying to cover Sagankov. They do. Mix it up there, and they stop the play for a face-off to the left of Tretriak with 35 seconds remaining in the second period of a terrifically hard-fought period in which the Canadian team seemed to have the edge and then faded in the latter part of this period. Foster, we've wanted to say this all along, so I guess we can now call that line of Anison, Lebedev, and Bodinov the headache line. There's no question about that because they uh, have now worked into even terms. Esposito gets a shot right from the face off there, working it a bit. Close. Reese gets his pass into the corner. It's Cashman trying to dig it out. Cashman plays it out in front. Here's a weak shot that time as Sagankov had Esposito covered. Another try with Cashman trying to dig that puck out. He's a master at that. The puck is knocked back into the corner. They jam there. The Soviets shoot it over on the far side. Yakushev couldn't reach it. The puck goes to center ice. Bergman fell, and Park shot it ahead. And that ends the second period. With the score, Canada four, and the Soviets four. This is game three from Winnipeg. Recapping the first two periods, Parisi opened the scoring for Canada from White and Esposito at 154. Petrov tied it up for the Soviet at 316. And at 1825, Rattel put Canada one up with Bergman and Cornoyer. The shots on goal, Canada 15 and the Soviet 9. In the second period, Esposito scored for Canada at 419 from Cashman and Parisi. At 12.56, Harlamov scored for the Soviet from Sagankov and Mihailov. At 13.47, Paul Henderson for Canada and Ellison Clark. At 14.59, the Soviet Lebedev from Vasiliev. And at 18.28, Bodnov from Edison to make it a 4-4 tie. Canada outshot the Soviet 16-8 in the second period. Correction, shots on goal in the second Just a reminder period. to the hockey By fans at home viewing these games, you can participate in voting for the most valuable Correction, player on Renault Team Canada by sending the name Canada of your choice to Box 5050 in, in Toronto, Montreal, or Vancouver. The winner, as selected by the fans, will receive the Labatt Best On Ice Award, a 1973 Ford Mustang Grande. Ballots are available from any Labatt representative or Ford dealer in Canada. This third period will be in two 10-minute sections under international rules, and they will change ends at the end of the first 10 minutes. Two teams are getting ready for the struggle here in this last period. They're going into the third period, 4-4 tie. They'll play 10 minutes, then change ends. And that is brought about by European rules when they used to play outside and the weather conditions were a, a factor that's why they split the third period in half now all set Maltsev cleared the puck to the Canadian blue line Ellis starting off with Clark and Henderson still at center ice Brad Park clip one to Ellis over the line Clark going in right in front of Henderson and his drive was off the target here's to Ellis in front a shot and Petriak. Petriak stopped that one. That's Harlamov coming, racing back at center. A big burst of speed. Going into the corner. Centered it, and it went right to the opposite corner. Henderson going slowly back to his own net, wearing the red helmet. Starting to move now. Skating to the blue line. Maltsev stopped him. Bergman at center. Lobbed it into the corner. 
And the Canadian team make changes as the puck slides down the ice. Esposito, number seven, goes in front of his own defense. Left it there for Bill White. Stapleton cleared a long one up to the blue line, deflected into the corner. Soviet go rushing to the side. Zichenko jammed on the board. Cashman was there. And Kuskin went in front of his own net, passed ahead. The Shadman goes to Yakushek, who let that shot go from the left side. Yakushek certainly lets that one go hard. Now the Canada come right back, and it's called on the play as the Canadian rush was starting. There's going to be a penalty handed out on this one. Both players are going to get the gate here, and this is what happens so often. The Soviets, as the play starts to shift up the ice, that's when they make their move, and it makes you wonder, Foster, whether they've been watching Gordy Howe play over the years. <laughs> Looks like Mishikov, number 12, is getting the gate for the Soviets. Now then they'll play a man short. Five aside. 8.27 left in the first half of the third period. It's a 4-4 tie. Checking still very close and hard. Penalties. USSR, number 12. Mishakov, two minutes for slashes. Canada, number 17. Bill White, two minutes for slashing at one minute and 33 seconds. Finition. 133. White and Mishikov off together. And the Mishikov. puck is in the Canadian zone. Puck Canada is back with a goal over to Stapleton, number three. Very cautious. Shoots it down the ice. It's going into the corner, back to the net. Lachenko shot it over the wing. Here's a drive by Peter Mahovlich that went off the side. Up to center ice. Cleared over the line into the corner. Yakushev is stopped by Savard. A clearing pass goes to that far wing. Yakushev into the corner, trying to wiggle his way out from the side. Cleared to Petrov in the corner. He shut it around on the play by Savard, who went down low to cover. What you have to be very careful of when both teams are playing shorthanded. Granted that they are playing evenly. Good work along the boards here. Look at Savard play the body. Now he's going for the puck with his skates. Good puck control here, taken down by Petrov. And Yakushev comes in and pins it along the boards. As I was saying, when you play shorthanded, it opens up a tremendous amount of more ice surface, and it gives the chance for the skating forwards to handle the puck a lot more than they normally would if there were five men out there. From the face-off, Soviets recover the puck, a pass in front of the net. That was close as Mahalov let that one go. Mahalov came in fast. Harlamov was in on that side, has it again, tearing over to Lechek right in front of the net. And a pass was went off the stick, and he couldn't control it. Soviets are pressing here as Stan Makita clears with Cornwallier rushing in, leaving it. The point. Couldn't control it. Stan Makita digs it out. Here's a shot by Lapointe. It hit the Soviet player. The point was knocked over by Sagankov. Park going back to get it. They're five aside. The pass to Cornwallier. Now to center. Lapointe over to Makita. He couldn't get up in time. Shatilov. Now again. Canada get a chance with Makita. Couldn't control the pass. Berkman waited too long, and the team turned full strength again, and the puck is shot over the line. Down for Mishikov, into the Canadian zone. Shot out to Cornwallier. Canadian team at center park, five. Weaving around, and they change players. Kick pass at center. Clark shoots it in to the corner, and Vasiliev plays it over on the right board. Henderson. Belted the Soviet player with real gusto. Here's another shot. Henderson couldn't see the pass or shot coming from behind him. They're off into the side. Here, right in front of the net. Oh, 
the check. Caught that one on Henderson right in front of the net. That was an unconscious save by Trechak. Bobby Clark has good control. Now watch Trechak. He has to watch Clark behind the net. He pinned against the post. Not really that aware of Henderson out there. And he makes a terrific save here. Henderson goes right out, parks himself in front of the net. Now look at Trechak. And he comes up with a terrific glove save and robs Henderson of the go-ahead goal. Henderson really thought he had that one in his mitt. The ice could definitely become a factor here in the third period. It is very wet, it's chippy, and as we've noticed, some of the passes are bouncing. The players are getting a little more cautious on this ice, and they're not going to take the chances with the long pass because they might bounce over the teammate's stick. 5.44 left in the first half of the third period. It's a 4-4 tie, and Clark, Ellis, and Hen here's a shot. Wide by Ellis, went off the target. A high lob cleared it out to center ice. Bill White shot it right back in again. Lichenko, number three, going back for the Soviet. Cleared a forward pass from a high lob to the blue line at center. Over the line, here's a shot. Into the corner, Maltsev went racing in back of the net. A high lob was trying to dig it out, but he's covered on the play by White. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets four. This is game three from Winnipeg. The face off will be to the right. The Canadian goal is the puck is shot to the corner. It's into the Pat Stapleton, played it off. Henderson stick right out to the Soviet line. Luchenko cleared it to his own line. Now the Canadian team rushed in there with Henderson getting it and was turned right around on the play. Puck is back at center. On a change of players, Esposito is out there now with Mihailov, 13, going to the blue line to center ice. Harlamov was unable to get the pass, and Bill White shoots it back of the net. Parisi driving it out to center, recovered by the Soviet. Mihailov tipped it right back to Kuskin. Kuskin, number four, giving it to Maltsev, number 10. He lost it. Another try for the Soviet down the left side. Mahalov couldn't get very far. Another try, this time by Gusev. He made a rink wide pass. It's deflected to the boards on this side. Chadron was unable to control it, and Gusev starts Mishikov at his own blue line. He's partially stopped. Mishikov picked up the pass from Gusev. Yakushev going in. They failed to get a shot. Chadwick's pass, and shot was intercepted by Cashman. Down that left wing, Canada attacking. Cashman shoots, and the drive was high and off the glass. Akashev to Shadron. Shadron going over the line. The backhand was stopped when it hit a skate. Up the cleared out at center ice. Esposito drove it into the corner after Stapleton's pass. On that far wing, Shadron was stopped. Mahovlich, Frank Mahovlich goes into the corner, centered it, back to the blue line, driven into the corner, back to the net. No one is there, and the Soviet recover with Shadron clearing to center ice. Another drive by Canada, Samar, with Rattel offside. And there'll be a face-off at the blue line. It's pretty to watch Savard handle that puck. He has such good control of it. His head's always up. And he knew exactly what he was doing there when he laid that puck over just a shade offside. Now they Soviet have Anderson at center ice. Bodnov is on the left wing as the slider goes to Vasiliev. Still bouncing around there. Anderson couldn't get away. Now it's a slider over to Bodnov. And they're checking very, very closely. Shadilov played it off the boards. Anderson couldn't get a drive on the goal, but it hit his skate. And the Canadian team shoot it down the ice. Petjak Jack just played it back of the net. Mahomlich, but no one was there to get it. Lebedev. 
Cleared over the line to Botnov. A long shot went wide. Canadian team tried to get that puck out, but they're having a hard time. It slides to the blue line. Finally, Cornwallier drove one off a leg. That's Vasiliev playing it over on the side to Botnov. A rink-wide pass to the far wing to Lebedev. Back again to Shatilov. And they're passing that puck around. Canada intercept. And it's LaPointe. Now out there with Park going in on that left side. Took a jolt from Vasiliev. But the Soviet player Shatilov in possession ahead to Harmelov. There they moving in over the line. A close call there as Maltsev couldn't get his shot away. Then Harlamov gets that puck again, going back to the goal. Centered at the shot, is off to the side and bounces to the blue line. Another drive is wide. Harlamov on that far wing. Lost it. Puckered in his clear to the line. Harlamov going in, passed it, right in front of the net. And it was stopped there. Oh, that was close as Park got in behind the goalkeeper to make that save. Harlamov makes a fantastic move at the blue line here. Deking to the inside there. Now look at this play as he goes in. This is a sure goal and out of nowhere comes Brad Park and takes it right out of the Canadian's net. Tony Esposito was beaten there on a good play. Brad Park saves the goal. 102 left in the first 10 minutes of the Third period, a 4-4 tie. Canada on the attack. Cashman is going in back of the goal. To the opposite side. 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Parisi is jammed against the boards. The pass came in front of the goal but was not effective. Harlamov going down fast with Mihailov. Mihailov is stopped by Park and knocked down. The puck is to the blue line from Lechenko to Maltsev. Into the corner. Bergman is trying to squeeze him out. Mihailov rushes over, centers it. No one is there. And Canada cleared out Cashman, driving it off the boards, down the ice. And it's called for icing. Any coach will tell you, when you're not sure about where to pass the puck, it never hurts to ice it or trap it along the boards and take that extra whistle. It's a lot better than making a bad pass and possibly costing your team a goal. Wayne Cashman tried to hit Parise, but wasn't that upset when it went to full length for icing. Soviet playing every man up here. Team first full strength, 13 seconds remaining in the first half of the third period. A 4-4 tie. Petrov is going to move in on the circle with Yakushev and Mishakov. Puck slides in front of the goal. Pat's table then is on the move. Played it off the boards. Y.A. tried to move in there fast, but didn't get that puck. Soviet cleared right back. Bill White going back, and it's icing, and it's called. With the score, Canada Ladies four, and, and the Soviets the four. This is game three NBA from Winnipeg. Canada. They have changed ends. The Soviet to our left now, Canada to the right, and they're coming in with Yakushev shooting one wide. Petrov tried to get the rebound off the board. Spertel lost it. It's centered back to Gusev at the blue line. The shot hit Bill White's skate, and he played it to the side. Mahovlich tearing it back to Stapleton. Canada sent every man up now. Stapleton at the blue line. Played it ahead. Spertel was in there with Cornwallier. But it was offside. Foster, it's going to be tough tonight to pick the most valuable player from each team because this game has been as close as the score, and I really don't know who they're going to pick because I wouldn't want to have that problem. Well, it's, it's certainly uh, been a team uh, game all the way through. Both teams have been relying on team effort rather than individual effort. That Tetschak has certainly uh, been putting on a great show there. Uh, Three or four times, uh, Canadian players were in close, but he always seemed to be able to grab that puck. Now Esposito at center, gets it back to Stapleton, over on the right side to White, and Cashman was given a jolt there, and I'm sure there'll be a receipt on that. Cashman going in with a backhand. Petriak 
was covering on that. Then that Parisi jams. The Soviet player here, Parisi and Vasiliev mixing it up a bit. They haven't uh, hit anybody, but it was close. Shadilov really gave Wayne Cashman a good check. There's a look at Bobby Hall sitting up there. Mr. Benny Haskins to his left. The Canadians are getting a little incensed here. Phil Esposito has been given, I believe, Foster, a misconduct penalty, and this could hurt Canada very much this stage of the game. Wayne Cashman, it was inevitable that Cashman would come back at number 14, Shadilov, gave him a good stiff check. Unfortunately, the referee was standing right behind him. And as so often happens, it's not the initial check that the referees see, it's often the retaliation. In this case, Wayne Cashman will pay the price. He's gone to the dressing room, too. Uh, so we'll see uh, just what uh, is the official on this, whether... Punition, Equipe Canada. Penalty, Team Canada, Wayne Cashman, number 14. Two minutes for slashing. Ten minute misconduct at 10.44. Punition, Equipe Canada, le numéro 14, Wayne Cashman. Two minutes pour avoir cinglé et dix minutes de mauvaise conduite à dix minutes 44. Cashman is off, and Stan Makita is taking his place. So apparently he was cut on the last play. Well, this is definitely going to hurt Team Canada because they need Cashman to get that puck out of the corners, and he has played a terrific game so far, and he'll be a big loss to Team Canada with 9.16 remaining in the game. That'll be a slashing penalty by Cashman, but you could tell that Cashman was going to try and get even after he had been hit hard. So now Canada will be a man short. And it's in the latter part of this third period, which is very tense and exciting at this stage. The puck is still in the Soviet zone. Lechenko lost it to Peter Mahovlich. He tried to center Esposito, who had argued on that last penalty, didn't get any penalty as uh, was indicated. The puck is back on this right side. Can't go. Failed to get anywhere. And it's back to Trichak. And the Soviet are regrouping again. They have the odd man advantage. Here they move up now. Five was pressed as they go up over the line to try the sweeping play. And Harlebaugh tried his uh, Maltsev shooting there. Went, went right over the net. That could have been a very dangerous play as the Canadians' defense backed up a little bit too far. They thought that Maltsev was going to pass the puck off, and Maltsev was driving for those two hash marks between the circles, and when you're there, that's the time to shoot. Only a good deflection got the puck up and out of play. Maltsev moved right in there. Harlamov was right on the left side there, close to him, and they're a dangerous pair. Harlamov gets that puck back. Zagankov couldn't control it. Zagankov going to the blue line, number seven. And it's trapped now to Mihailov. Here comes the Soviet again, a dangerous rush. Mihailov from the corner, goes back to the net, played it over to Maltsev, 10, to the blue line, to Sagankov, back to Maltsev. His pass is blocked by Bergman, and Bergman swung his stick at him. There's a roller right in front of the net. And it's stopped there by Tony Esposito. The Soviets trying to establish puck control this is what they do so well. They keep it to the outside of the box. Good puck control. Back to Zagankov. Key defenseman on their power play. Bergman has it deflected here. Comes back to Maltsev. And Tony Esposito makes two big saves, stopping the initial shot and then the rebound. There's coach Bob Rob on his left, Kulagan. All set to go for the faceoff. Maltsev knocked it to the corner. It's back of the goal for Park. There's no overtime in this game or any in the series. Now Maltsev getting a chance. Pass here, right in on goal. A slider went right across the goal mode. It went right behind.
behind Esposito, but it didn't go in. Bergman is desperately trying to get that puck away. He did. Goes down the ice. Esposito steps on the ice. No and they're changing on the goal. Savard is coming out with Lapointe. Soviets move up four abreast at center ice. Coming in on the right side. Harlamov pass back to the blue line. Off to the side. Goes behind the goal and over onto the swing. Now they're the high loft trying to dig it out from the side. Played it back to the blue line. Here's a shot. Bounced it over on the wing. Hit a leg. Knocked out by Makeda. A race for him. Down for Esposito. Right in. And the shot was stopped by Pretag. Again, the Soviet come back with Maltsev at center. Over the line. He stops. Now they're going to draw that pattern play. Intercepted by Cornwaye. Going down the low. Around on that side. Into the corner. Centered it out. He touched it, but couldn't deflect it. And the puck is shot down the ice. And it's called Austin, you just couldn't see better hockey anywhere in the world than we're seeing right here. The people in Winnipeg have seen a lot of top international hockey, and I'm sure this is the greatest game that any of these fans at this game have ever seen. And reminding you, with 6.29 left in regu regulation play, there's no overtime. Brett Bertel gets a draw, fired a shot, it's, oh, that was close. Now the Soviet breakout again at center ice. Teams at full strength. But bounces off. The goalkeeper goes to the side. Open. A pass. Went off the skate. Cleared out on the right wing. And Lebedev trying to get the early kick line out there for the Soviet. And they're offside with Vodnov going in ahead of the play. This is one of the few lines of the Soviets. Of course, this is their first game in this series. But they played all last year together as a unit, and it definitely shows out here. They know exactly what each member of the line can do and will do at a particular moment. Anderson, Lebedev, 23, and Vodnov, 24. Out there for the Soviet, Frank Mahovlich, with for talent center, Cornwaye on the other wing. Stapleton goes back to the Canadian goal. Played it to Mahovlich. Frank Mahovlich over on the wing to Cornwaye. It bounces into the Soviet zone. Shadlov on the defense, and it's called as the icing call. Or rather, on the offside. 546. 546. It appears in that last scramble that Gila Point had to leave the ice with a full muscle. Don't know whether we'll see him back in the game or not. Bill White is playing up at the center red line. Pat Stapleton is showing the referee some water or snow back to the net. I was commenting on this earlier, Foster. What Stapleton was pointing out is that to the back of the Canadian's net, there is a chunk of ice of about two feet long running along the boards that has come right out. With the score, Canada four and the Soviets four. This is game three from Winnipeg. They've had some trouble. They've had some trouble with the ice. They put the ice into the Winnipeg Arena only a few days ago. Apparently this summer, Foster, they put in new machines in here, and I'm sure that they're still ironing out a few of the bugs uh, on the ice surface. And at the back of Canada's uh, goal, all along the boards there, the ice has been very bumpy in the practices. In fact, sheets of ice have come right up, and now they are coming out to repair it because it's all important for puck control when that puck is bouncing around the, the boards on a shot and if it starts to bounce uh, it could be very critical to Team Canada's position in this end. Well this might be a good time to recap the first two periods. Canada opened the scoring at 154 the first period. Parisi from White and Esposito at 316. Petrov tied it up for the Soviet. And in 1825, Rattel put Canada one up from Berkman and Cornwaye for a two to one lead for Canada at the end of the first period. Canada outshot the Soviet 15 to nine in that first period. Then in the second period, at 419, Esposito scored for Canada from Cashman and Parisi. At 1256, Harlamov scored for the Soviet from Sagankov and Mihailov. 
At 1347, Paul Henderson for Canada from Ellis and Clark. At 1459, Lebedev from Vasiliev. That was a shot from the blue line that bounced off Lebedev into the net when it appeared as if it had gone off a Canadian player. And in 1825, Vodanov scored the tying goal from Anderson to make it 4-4 at the end of the second period. And Canada outshot the Soviet in that second period, 16-8. This break in the action uh, with five minutes, just over five minutes remaining in the game, could be just what Team Canada needs. This, the pace of this game has been tremendously fast, and this little rest right now could give them a good chance. Looking at another highlight here, we see Maltsev break up the ice with good puck control. The puck ends up going back into the point here. And Harlamov makes a good move here coming out, gets that puck back to the point. Good shot. This is the Soviet puck control. They want to keep a hold of that puck. They have good anticipation. Now here's that move to the inside, and that was a beautiful move. And if he not just drilled that puck a little harder, they would have scored. From the face-off, the puck is at center ice. Mishakov is driving it in and back of the goal. Esposito stopped it back of the net. Frank Mahovlich over on the left side. Rattel, Rattel at center ice. Flipped it on into the corner. Mishakov covering him. The puck is there. Mishakov is knocked over. Petrov, 16, goes into the corner. Harnwaii couldn't stop but slide right back to Bill White in the Canadian zone. It's a 4-4 tie, no overtime. And Bill White failed to get out when checked by Mishakov. He's trying to dig it out, but he was held against the boards by Rattel and Bill White. At this stage of the game, when that puck gets along the boards, you have to trap it. You can't take a chance of making a blind pass. Bill White, an experienced defenseman, would never take that chance, traps it. Now it does set up a face-off in your end, but it's a lot better than making an errant pass out into that center zone. Esposito going out there for center for Canada. Peter Mahovlich is on one wing, and Parisi is on the other. Petrov, 16, at center for the Soviet. Kuskin cleared it back of the net. Soviets still have it, center it. And it's blocked by Esposito, who's on the move. He was up to the blue line, still going. And it's recovered by Mishikov. Coming back at center, Mishikov cleared on the left wing. The pass is deflected. Bergman rushes back on a three-man drive with Esposito, who takes the pass. Going up with Park on the far side. The shot hit the side of the net. Bounce to the corner. It's Peter Mahovlich trying to go back to the goal, trying to center it, but blocked. Mishikov fights for that puck, rolled it to the blue line, helped by Petrov. Mishikov at center, over the line. The shot bounded off Park, cleared over onto the left wing. Not out, though. Yakushev failed to get a chance. Kluskin. Back to the blue line for the Soviet, number four. Makes a rink wide pass. Starting to weave a bit. Harlamov got it over to Maltsev. Maltsev into the corner. Berkman failed to stop him. Pass comes out to Park. On the left side, Parisi couldn't go through. And the Canadian team are changing on the goal. Another rush by Harlamov, down the right side. He's closing in, made the pass to, against the boards, a long shot. And the shot is up there by Tony Esposito by line, right in front of the net. Harlamov makes another one of those classic moves, and I have to give him in my mind after this move, he has been the best player for the Soviets tonight. He has a shift that is almost unbeatable. He comes down that ice, he put a move on Pat Stapleton, that Stapleton was just lunging at him after he'd gone by him. 328 left in the game, 4-4 tie. The puck goes to the blue line. Soviet take a shot. The stop by Esposito. Stapleton cleared it out at center. Lechenko lost it. It goes over the line. 
Clark tried to follow and missed it. A return right by the Soviet, coming up over the line. Hyloff took the drive high, went off the boards, partially intercepted by Henderson, goes to Maltsev. It's cleared off to the corner to Savar. Clark's pass, blocked in center ice by Sagankov. Sagankov couldn't get his shot away and bumped into the board. Savar for Canada, lobbed it out the center. Henderson getting in on breakaway, right in. And the drive went wide. Henderson had a quick chance there. Now no chance to kill as he waited too long. A high lob gets the end of the center ice. They're going in, Mark Karlamov. Fell, but gets it to Maltsev. Stop and clear to the wing. Still trying to get that puck out. It bounced out to center ice. 215 left in the game. That's table that leads the rush. Going down alone, trying to go through the defense. Knocked Tagankov over. Soviet Cup racing back with a long shot. Intercepted at center. Park goes right back. There's the drive off. Jackson's leg. Vasiliev tried to clear. It's in the corner. Martin Y.A. couldn't cover his man. And the puck was shot down the ice. Bergman is back first. And beat Mishikov to it. Canadian team clear out. Went out. And he tried to go knock it back in. 1.33 left in the game. 4-4 tie, there'll be no overtime if the tie score. Valery Vasiliev, a 23-year-old defenseman who has played a tremendous game tonight for the Soviets. Going back into his end to pick up a helmet, which had been knocked off him earlier. And we'll see a huge movement for the uh, Soviets in this game tonight that seems to pick the Soviet team up. Arnwaye trying to get going, passed it right on to Mishikov's stick, but he couldn't get anywhere. Back for Vasiliev. The Soviets start right back at center ice, and Mishikov will stop. Now Kuskin clears over on the far side, and it would appear as if the Soviet was trying to hold out of that tie. Here's a quick pass to Petrov. Over on to the side, Mishikov fired one back to the net. Bergman recovers with one, one minute, minute left of in the play game. remaining in and the game. Down, down the left side. A stop. And the puck went over the glass into the crowd. The face off on the rim of the circle. Foster, you couldn't see better hockey anywhere. I just can't get over the pace that they're keeping up. They played 59 minutes of hockey and they're going at it as if it were the opening minute of the game. Phil Esposito. I've never seen him work harder. He's playing probably as good hockey right tonight as he's played in his life. It's been a tremendous game, no question about it, and it's been very evenly played. With Canada having the advantage in the first half, and the Soviet coming back to edge the Canadian team to get a 4-4 tie with 53 seconds remaining. There's been little to choose between the two teams. Asposito. Get it, trying to get the draw, had it momentarily, lost it. Soviet breakout at center ice. Harlamov tipped it towards the goal from the corner. Greasy is covering on the side, lost it. Harlamov drove one wide to the far side. Ellis, there to Esposito. Coming down on that far wing, fired a shot. Right front of the net. What a chance Greasy had right in on top of the goal. Back comes the Soviet on the right side. Over the line for Harlamov. Turned aside. Mihailov centered out. A shot. And again, another great save this time by Tony Esposito. What a save by Esposito. Maltsev gets a good backhand away here. Again, Harlamov. Always tough to handle. Good puck control. It bounces out now. Maltsev's out of our screen. Good backhand. Esposito, a big save late in the game. 13 seconds to go. At this stage, Foster, in a game, you want to make sure you don't do anything defensively that will cost you the game. You'll be happy to get out of a game like this with a tie. 
and they've had a number of close calls in this one at either end. Goalkeeping has really been tremendous. Petrov is ready for the faceoff for the Soviet. Got the draw, but was knocked back to Bergman. Bergman is grabbed by Petrov and hauled down. The puck is in the corner. Bergman ran at his check. Petrov, and the puck is back in the corner. The high loft covered, and the game is over. And it's ended in a 4-4 tie. Canada 4, the USSR 4, and that's a fair appraisal of a tremendous struggle. Two teams are tired, but put up a tremendous effort. But the final score, Canada 4, and the Soviets 4. This is Game 3 from Winnipeg.